tools we don't have are um, a critical mass of elected officials who understand and know what we're talking about. Because then there's like elected officials, there's people who are also who have been put and appointed, um, put in power and appointed into power. And, you know, uh, they don't know community. They don't care to know community. Um, and so I think that that is, <laughs> you know, a huge kind of um, tool that we don't have. Um, I also think that um, we live in a society um, that, or the way racism works, is that um, they disenfranchise us and um, they try to deny us of our power that is innate within us. And so, you know, there is, I think, not a strong belief that an individual can create change. And I think that uh, there's also this idea that to be successful, you have to assimilate and do things in a certain type of way. And that's not the case, right? You don't have to necessarily um, have, you know, uh, 75 years of education to create change. You don't necessarily have to be, you know, a CEO to create change. You don't have to, um, you know, be leading, you know, a multi-million dollar organization to create change. And so this idea that change and success can only happen in this way, in this one way, um, I think strips us of our power. Um, and so um, I think, I think the question, what was the question, uh, what are the tools we don't have? So I think that um, there is the socialization that happens um, that makes us think that there are all these kind of additional tools that we actually need, that we don't need, um, but it, if we learned about it in school, if we learned about how powerful um, as individuals we are, if we learned about in school what organizing was, if we understood in school, you know, this is the way change has happened across generations, um, I think that we would be much more successful and realize kind of the impact that we can have um, as communities of color and black people in particular. Um, and so I think when I think about those kinds of tools, you know, there I think there's something about like the kind of systems that we live in um, that, um, strips us or tries to strip us, strip us of those tools um, and then you know there's kind of the general tools that some of us you know fight regularly for which is funding and you know power at the local and state and national level um, that you know we need more folks who are allies um, with us who are doing this work and there's allies who can create you know um, uh, pathways to privilege, right, and to power, not privilege, access, um, pathways to um, power, um, and uh, that's something that we need more of. Um, I think we need more space to come and organize together and to think together and to plan together. Um, you know, I think that they sometimes, we're sometimes disenfranchised, right? Um, I think it's very important that we have space for different sections of our community right like as a black cis woman you know there's experiences that I'm gonna have that are about being a black cis woman we need to organize around that um, and you know as a black trans woman you know there's gonna be space that needs to happen that's specifically for that community but there also needs space for us to come together the tools that we don't have we don't have a, a, the massive amounts of resources um, to do the work um, and I, I hate to boil it down to money but money makes things happen and um, I think sometimes you need free money. Uh, free money that allows you to be creative and authentic as opposed to money that forces you to do something that has been defined within a bureaucratic system that fits into a box. Um, that doesn't solve problems. As people, we don't live in boxes and we don't live in the corner. Um, we live and we prosper from being able to be free and exploratory in who we are. And um, so funding for organizations like community-based organizations need to have access to resources that allow them to be as creative as the people who work there. Um, I, I am certain that uh, our nation is full of um, community-based organizations that are um, fueled by passionate people uh, doing the work almost for nothing. But the work is so much more than just nothing, and it needs resources to be able to kind of 
push the machine. Um, so money. And then I would also say um, the mentoring opportunities for young people stepping into uh, leadership has not been as strong and as powerful as it needs to be. I think a lot of uh, executive directors of late have been purposeful in preparing their next generation to lead, which is important, but I do think that we need a much stronger and bolder large initiative uh, to uh, usher young people into positions of leadership, um, whether it be some um, alternative black executive preparation program that's funded by um, an entity that knows who we are as a people. Um, I, I just think that that would be a, a huge resource I love the ideas of, uh, of the conversation and the dialogue, um, and if somehow we could formalize that in a way that is structured, that leads um, mentees to find their next big thing so that they can step into their truth and into their um, leadership uh, role, I think, um, I think our community and the next generation will go quite far. I'm of the belief that we have everything we already need within us. We have the power, we have the capacity, we just have to figure out how to, how to utilize it. Uh, you think about things that have happened, great tasks that have happened in the past, for good or bad purposes. Nobody ever thought that it could be done until somebody decided that it was important to do it. Who, who thought we were going to be able to pass marriage equality when that idea first came up. Who thought we are going to be able to get civil rights for blacks when that first started? Uh, it just takes uh, determined people willing to act and uh, not willing to sit on their butts but to do something.